morning. We should have a, meaning, a meaningful fast. Um, let's begin with the new parak kafal from an aleph twenty one a. Again, I'm sorry for the delay. I was eating breakfast at home. Um, this parak deals with lost objects, and I guess to introduce the parak, we'll talk about three three concepts. Uh, the word aveda, aveda is a lost object. Obviously, it's something that the owner doesn't know where it is. There's another word called hachroza. Hachroza is sort of an announcement. You know, hachroza would be to put up signs saying that you found a lost object. Oh. And if you're obligated to return it, you might also be obligated to put out a hachroza, <clears throat> to put out an announcement notifying people that you found a lost object. And the third one is called yush. What does yush mean? Yush means to... Uh, um, yeah, it basically means to give up, to give up the possibility of finding it. Once you're Yayesh, then it's no longer yours. And we'll have to see this. There are some details. It may depend on when you were Miyayesh. If, let's say, the finder finds it before you were Miyayesh and then you were Miyayesh, he would still have an obligation to return it to you. So, for example, you find a, you find a wallet, okay? Mm -hmm. You're, you're, uh, you decided, you decided, okay, you have an obligation to, it's a Jewish guy, you can see from his ID, and you decided to hang up signs. You start hanging up signs. And while you're hanging up signs, you hear one guy talking to another guy about his lost wallet, and it's the guy who lost his wallet. He says, oh, I gave up. I'm never going to find it again. You'd still be obligated to return it to him because you found it before he gave up. If, on the other hand, you were walking down the street and you heard somebody complaining loudly that he lost his wallet, mm -hmm. and then three minutes late, and, and, and basically giving up from returning it. He's not looking for it anymore. And then three minutes later, you happen to find the wallet, you can keep it. Okay. Mm -hmm. These metzias, these lost objects are yours. And these, you have to, you're obligated to make an announcement to return. Which ones are yours? Matzah Paris and Fuzarim. You find fruits that are spread out. I should really point out probably one more thing, which is a simon. A simon is an identifiable sign or feature. If you find something without a simon, like these things, fruits that are sort of spread out, there's no simon, so the owner has no way to identify the lost object. There's no way to identify the lost object, and you have even a bigger problem. Because even if the owner doesn't want to give up, effectively he has to give up, because there is no way for him to, for him to prove that the item belongs to him. And we'll discuss this point in a little bit. Okay, so pears and fuzaris spread out fruit, moist and fuzaris money that was spread out on the floor wasn't wasn't in a wallet, it wasn't tied up in a certain way, or you find krichais, you find uh, bundles of wheat, vishusarabim in the public area, the igulet vela, you find these large uh, fig fig patties, kikar shalnachtam, you find the bread of a baker. Okay, in other words, the a homeowner's bread is always different, and there might be something unique about a homeowner's bread. But a factory bread, they're all identical. So there's no way to identify the shape or the type of bread from uh, you know, from any other similar bread that comes from the same baker. Machroiz is a string of fish, slices of meat, the uh, you semer, know, shorn wool, that are that are purchased, you know, straight. Uh, straight as as you know, shade, uh, shorn wool, not as threads. It wasn't like crafted into anything. Again, there's no sim in there. The anitze pishton. Uh, same thing is true of t with tufts of uh, uh, flax. Uh, these are uh, um, these are um, pieces of material that are made, that are purple. Whoa. Purple wool. All these belong to to the the finder. Diver mayor. It's the opinion of her mayor. If there's something different, there's something unique, then you'd be obligated to uh, to 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 return it and to be machras to make the announcement. Ketzad, for example, you find these fig patties, but inside of it you find a charas, you find a vessel. Kikar, a loaf of bread, inside of its money. Right? No simple piece of bread there. So all these, so these type, these are examples of things that have to be returned because there's a difference, there's something unique about them. Not obligated to announce, Kli and Purya will have to explain in the Gemara what exactly that is. 
Okay, so let's begin. Matzah peris mefuzaris. If you find fruit and it's spread out, exactly what does that mean? It's spread out. How much is spread out? The kavl. How much? Amravitzla kav ba'arba amis. One measurement of kav within four amis. So the Mars is hechidami. What's the scenario? Iderach nefila afil tu benami. Okay. If derech nefila is, where clearly it sort of fell out. So he was carrying a big bag and there was a hole in the bag and a bunch of the things fell fell out. So if you look even if it was a lot more, even if it was a lot more than that measurement, you should still be obligated to return it. If he, if he sort of put it down there and forgot it, I feel a So then he knows, he knows where the item is. Right? So you find a bag, you find a shopping bag on, on the floor by a bus stop, right? You know what happened there. It didn't fall, right? And even less than that, you should obligate it to be, to, to, to you should be obligated to return it. Amar Rav Ukva Bar Chama, Rav Ukva Bar Chama explained, Vach Nashto Debei Dori Askinon. We're talking here that it was lost on the threshing floor. Kav, okay, meaning, the point here is that this amount, of, this quote-unquote loss is just, it, it, it's sort of the course of business. Right? So when you, you know, you, you go to a, if you go to, um, an agricultural processing facility, there's a certain amount that's lost as normal course to course of business. You know, mm-hmm. they, they unload a truck and, and stuff falls on the floor. And you think they pick it up? There's a lot they pick it up. If there's not a lot, they just leave it. Okay, so kav arba amis, if you find one kav in, 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 within four amis, the nafesh terchayu, that it's worth, you know, picking it up. Let, uh, let tar, uh, one second. I'm sorry, the Nafshah Chai that this it, it's too much labor. So then Laitarach Inchi in Ish Vilay Hadar al Siva Shakal. So then they're not going to put in the time and he's not coming back to get it. Afkur Mafalu, he's effectively giving up on it. But if it's less than that, Tarach Vadar al Siva Shakal, Vashakalu. If it's less than that, then he will put in the time and he'll he'll uh, he'll go back and and you know collect the things and put it put it, you know, collect the stuff and take it with him. And he does not he does not make it ownerless. Okay, now that we know the measurement is one kav and four amis, we have the famous Rabirmia, right? And Rabirmia, right according to his legend, is going to ask a bunch of fine questions about this measurement. Mm. So let's, and, and that basically takes us to the end of the page. So, Rabirmia, so remember, the amount is one kav, page position. Oh, page position is uh, we're about uh, a little more than halfway down the page. Um, uh, first word on the line is Mafka Lahu, where a boy of Yermia, a little more than halfway down the page, uh, 21a. Boy of Yermia, Chati Kav Bishtay Amis, Mahu, Kav. Okay, so you find half the measurement in half the space, right? Instead of four square Amis, you have half of that, so two by four, and and um. You find half the measurement. Mao, what what's the story? Is it because that the amount of uh, of effort it takes to, is is more? There's more effort in four by four than two by four. So so, so therefore that that's why four by four he makes it on a list, but two by four he does not. I don't know, or do we say mission delay chashivi? Chatsi kabish de amas keep the chashivi mafalo. Or is it it's not just about a certain minimum minimum a certain amount of effort, it's about a certain amount of chashivas, a certain amount of value. And ultimately speaking, the value distribution is identical. Mm-hmm. Right? In other words, if you have mm-hmm. if you have one unit in four by four and half mm-hmm. a unit in four by two, the the the, the um the it's value the proposition what the density. Same. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. The density is the same, so therefore, it, therefore, the value proposition is identical, and therefore, he will not return. Or do you say, no, 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 it's not about the value proposition, it's about a certain amount of work. Mm. It takes 50 calories of work, and nobody wants to work 50 calories. Mm. 20 of calories, they'll work. So that, that, that they'll do. Okay, next, we have a similar question. Kabayim b'shemayin amas Two kabim in eight amas Maha, what's the story? Kabayim amas time amas time amas time amas time amas time amas amas do we say 50 calories is too much? For sure, if it's 100 calories, you find twice the amount and twice the measurement, right? So you have four by eight with twice tw- two units. So it's it's way too much work. Or is it because the, the, the unit is not significant? 
But but two units, even though the, the, the value proposition is identical in terms of the work the work per value, but over here it's two units, two units is, is significant already. So, so therefore he'll go back and he will, even with the same value proposition, he'll clean it up. But he won't make it ownerless, he wants it. Similar ne next question. Okay, so you have a, a, a same unit of sesame seeds. So what do you have here? You have a tremendous amount of value because mm -hmm. sesame seeds are much, much more valuable than wheat. Mm -hmm. But you have a crazy, crazy in increase in the amount of labor you have to do. Mm -hmm. It's well, not well, as easy. Well, is, the, is the point the value? But uh, and, and over here, you certainly have the value. Or is it a measurement of work? And it's not a it's not a value measurement. It's a measurement of the amount of effort it will take. And with sesame seeds, it will take a lot more effort. Similarly, kav tamri ba'armamis. You have a, a a unit of of tomorrow of dates, or kav rimayne, a unit of pomegranate. Ma'u kav ba'armamis tamri ma'im shnu lechashivi kav tamri ba'armamis kav rimayne ba'armamis nami kim shnu lechashivi mafkelo. These things also have less have less value. That. In other words, the, the sort of their value is is roughly identical to, uh, to to wheat. So just like wheat, the value isn't significant mm -hmm. one unit of four amos. So therefore, these things also aren't significant. In 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 the scenario of the pomegranates and the dates, so these are much larger items, right? With the wheat, you're sort of picking at straws, quite literally. Right. But over here. You're you're picking out large fruits. It's much easier to pick up, or even medium-sized fruits, mm -hmm. a small fruit. So it's worth the effort. So maybe if the effort is the main point of the measurement, well, over here you have less effort. So Gemara says, "My, what's the story of all these questions?" The answer is, like most of Rabbi answer is "Take it, we'll let it stand." Okay, now we get to a famous Gemara. This Gemara is uh, legendary. Itmar. We learned Yish Shalomi Das Abaya Amar Loi Havi Yish Vrov Amar Havi Yish. What is Yish Shalomi Das? We're now on top of twenty one B. Yish Shalomi Das is where we are. Had I known, I would have given up. So a guy loses something. Let's say, for example, somebody was somebody was driving in uh, in uh, he was driving through Portland. And he didn't realize his back window was open and all his, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, large groceries were flying out the window. And, okay, so he, he's, uh, you know, say, so it depends. If he was driving through, you know, southwest, maybe somebody would return it to him. He's driving through downtown or, or southeast, you know, it's unlikely that that happens. Okay, now, so now what happened was somebody was walking in, uh, in southeast right through one of these encampments and he finds... He finds a bunch of the guy's groceries in the bag with the receipts. So he knows exactly who it is. He knows which store it was. He can easily figure out who, who bought it. He can argue like this. Had the guy known that he lost in the Southeast, he would never bother trying to even look for it. He would give up give up on it immediately. It's not worth it. He knows presumably that it'll be taken by you know, somebody who's uh, pretty desperate for it whatever, it, whatever it is, and he's not going to return it. So Yish Lemidas would say, look, had he known, he would have given up. So therefore, it's as if he's given up right now, and I, the finder in Southeast, can keep it. Or do we say, no, you have to ultimately give up. If, you know, presumably the guy can sort of retrace his steps, you know, follow his GPS around town to see where he went. And and until he realizes he, he lost it in Southeast, he doesn't give up on on uh, on finding the items. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so Abaya says, yish. it's not this theoretical reverse yish. How does, uh, how does our school translate yish? Let me ask. Oh. Abandonment too. Without a way. Uh, abandonment, that's it. No one really abandons. Okay, <clears throat> sort of really, okay, whatever, whatever that means. See, so un yish he abandonment without awareness. Without awareness, okay. So, Okay, anyway, yeah, it seems to be more of a technical, literal definition than a functional one. Okay, regardless, so, so this is, it's sort of a theoretical, right? So he, so theoretically, had he known, he would have abandoned it. 
right? Abaya says, not called, not called Yush, not called abandonment. You haven't given up on it yet. And Rava says, no, 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 it is called Yush. Okay. Bedover Shiesh by Simon, if the item has identifying features, Kula Amalai Pligi, Delay Havi Yush. Everyone agrees that that's not called giving up. Okay. So this is an example of a guy who loses a wallet in a in a in a I don't know in a, in a sports stadium, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so in this case, in this case, because his wallet has his ID in it, there's a good chance it will be returned. Especially considering the cameras and everything else, there's a good chance it'll be returned. It's funny we found a wallet by a stadium that someone had dropped. It had ID in it, and so we're able to call it. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so now, in this case, you find the ID, and then you hear the guy giving up five minutes later. Ah. Right? The story has been, Yisur Hudas other. That means is that when you picked it up, he hadn't given up yet. You only heard him giving up giving up 10 minutes, 10 minutes later. Therefore, you still must return it. Uh, one second. In the case of a wallet in the stadium, the guy doesn't give up right away. He'll probably call the lost and found or something, see if see if somebody found it. Because he says he says, Simon is the big I have a simon. You hidden a simon. I'll give the, you know, I have ID. They'll do a photo check, uh, you know, to see if I match my ID. And I'll collect it. So that makes sense. Now we get to Bizuti Shalyam Bishlulisa Shalnar. We will discuss Bizuti Shalyam Shlulisa Shalnar tomorrow. Uh, yeah, probably tomorrow. Okay, what, basically, in a nutshell, these things are things that are so lost that you can say you can say you don't abandon it, but that's really a meaningless statement. What happened was you you were uh, you know you lost your you lost something in a river, you know, you, you lost it on a on a long treacherous mountain hike, in, in a type of thing that you're not turning back to get it. Alfagav de Ispe Simon, even if it has a sign on it. Rahman Asharia, could it be in the Come on. The Torah says it's permissible for the, the finder to keep it. So if you're swimming in the river and you happen to dig up, you know, some gold bar that was left by uh what was it hijacker's name? Uh, he stole money, he stole cash in this in this this part of town. You know, I'm talking about uh, the nineteen seventy-nine hijacker. He he hijacked a plane and and uh, jumped out the back with a parachute. Uh, 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 DB Cooper. DB Cooper, thank you. Oh, DB Cooper. Wow. So if you're if you're hiking in the St. Helens area and you find D.B. Cooper's money, you can keep it. At least according to Halacha, I don't know, maybe the state will be upset with you. I don't know if the FBI is not going to be happy. Maybe and for that reason, you probably should tell them. Uh, otherwise, maybe they'll think that you're D.B. Cooper. Anyway, um, but but that that's sort of everyone, you know, it's already been given up. It's 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 fallen under the bridge. You know, if it was lost in a way it was impossible to retrieve, and you happen to be you happen to have been in a difficult situation and found something there, you can keep it. Okay, Avgav de Ispe Simin, Rahman Asharik, the Bin Lamemba Kaman. The Torah says it's permissible, like, like we explained. I'll give you a good, a good example of this. If anyone remembers it, the SS the SS Central America. It was it sunk, I think, in the in the 1850s or 60s. And uh it was carrying hundreds in modern money, hundreds of millions of dollars in gold and silver, coins and bullion and everything. <laughs> and insurance insurance paid out for the boat. And uh then it was found in the 90s. Mm. And uh, there was a major, major fight over it. Uh, the finders obviously said it was theirs because they found it. The California said it was theirs because it was their gold. I believe it was found off the coast somewhere in the, in in, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so, so a bunch of local states decided it was theirs because the treasures were found in their, technically speaking, their waters. And the Fed, the Fed said it was theirs. Be the Fed said it was theirs because uh, because any lost treasure at a certain amount of time becomes the Fed's. And then the state, the, the destination state, also said it was theirs because the money was going to them. And not only that, the insurance companies that paid for the boat was still around 130 years later. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they said it was theirs because they paid the insurance claim. So, and it, it went to, and it went to court. Under Halocha, this would be considered owned by the finders. Mm. I think it was Odyssey that found it. Or maybe Odyssey recovered it. I don't remember exactly who found it. And by the time the court case is all done, everybody lost. Yeah, exactly. It was ten years later. No, there was enough money to pay for lawyers. lawyers. It was. It, there was enough money to pay for the lawyers. This was like the the value of that boat was incredible. <laughs> but th th this is an example of Zut de Shalyam. You find a lost ship, it's yours. Okay, and everyone agrees. There's no such thing as Yir Shalemidas there. You know, even if 
it doesn't make a difference if you never heard about the essence of Central America. You've given up on finding it mm -hmm. because it was lost in a shipwreck. It's impossible to find. Okay. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about something that does not have a sign. So you lost a regular thing without a simon. You lost a bag of fruit from the farmer's market, and you lost it on the street somewhere, and it's a regular bag, and you don't know that you lost it. You dropped it, you didn't realize you dropped it. Rava says, well, if you would have known, you would have given up, because there's no, there's no identifying features. That, that means you gave up already. And Abaya says, no, no, no. You didn't realize you lost it. You haven't given up yet. Okay, Simon. Hamgash Magdi Kikasas. What does these mean? The first letter of each of these is one of the proofs. The next large piece of Gemara deals with proofs going both ways. And see, each letter is its own proof. So how many letters do you have there? 15. Yeah, that's the number. 15 proofs going on either side. Most of these are questions in Abaya. Some of these are questions in Rava. And ultimately speaking, we'll get to it tomorrow. The halacha follows Abaya. And this is one of the exceptions, one of the six exceptions known as Yaal Kigam. Generally speaking, the halacha follows Rava. With, and this is one of the six exceptions with halacha follows Abaya. Yish Lemidas is not considered Yish. Let's go through it. Let's go through it. Toshma, the pay. First one. Toshma. Paris Mufuzarum, our mission. A guy finds fruits. So the Gemara says, Halayada de Nafamine. He doesn't know that he dropped it. The mission says, if you find fruit, you're allowed to keep it. You don't know that you, but, 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 but how do you know that the guy knows that he lost it? How, do you, how, how are you able to keep it? Maybe the guy doesn't know about it. He doesn't realize he lost it. So the Gemara says, no, no, no. Rav Ukva already says, we're talking here about an agricultural uh, processor, right? Where he sort of knows it's just not worth his time. So he knows he abandoned it. So this is not a, an example of Yosh Shalom Midas. This is an example of Yosh Midas, right? He knows. Toshma, next one. Mohs and Fuzaris. He lost, he lost uh, money. Hareil Shalai, he's allowed to keep it. It's a question of Abaya. How are you allowed to keep it? According to Abaya, maybe the guy doesn't know that he dropped it. So Gemara says, We don't know that he dropped it. So the Gemara says, If Yitzchak has invoked a general principle, I'm sorry, if Yitzchak stated a general principle, which the Gemara will invoke here, the principle is that a person touches his wallet constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, especially before the days of credit cards, right? You couldn't dispute charges. You paid cash, you lost it. So you checked how much cash you had. And a person would check his wallet frequently. So if a person lost money from his wallet, it's very likely that he already knows about it. If he lost his wallet, he for sure knows about it because mm -hmm. he touches his wallet constantly. So our, when a guy finds money, you can presume that the, that the loser already is aware that he lost the money. And therefore, you can keep the money even according to Abaya because this again is Yush Midas. He already knows that he lost the money. Good. Mm -hmm. What? What does he give it up? Presumably, because there's no sign. There's no. It's, so he lost plain cash. You know, Toshma Igulid Vela. These large fig patties, or Kikar Shalnachtem, the bread of a baker. Harela Shalai. They they belong to the finder. Oh, and second, how do they belong to the finder? Maybe the loser doesn't know he lost it. Am I valayod enough? I mean, I. According to Abaya, Yish Lamidas is Loy Havi Yish. So he hasn't given up because he doesn't know he lost it. So Gemara says, I got the Akiri made the other move. These things are heavy. So if you drop them and they're heavy, you figure out pretty quickly that you dropped them. So therefore, these things, he knows that he lost it. Toshma, Ulushayna Shalar Gomon. These, uh, these um, pieces of uh, cloth, wool that was made, purple wool. Hare Lushalai, they belong to him. Well, maybe he doesn't know that he lost it. How can you keep it? So Gemar says, yeah. This purple wool was extremely expensive. If anyone knows anything about purple wool in the time of, of the Talmud, it was very, very expensive. And and uh, therefore, a guy who's carrying purple wool is obviously going to be touching it constantly to make sure it's still there. And if he loses it, he knows very quickly, and therefore you can find it. So if, if he loses it and knows he, loses, he lost it, the person that finds it is allowed if he allowed. loses it, he knows he loses it, and it's the type of item that has no identifying signs. So there's no hope of him ever getting back, getting it back. There's no way for him to get it back. 
even if theoretically he could somebody could find it easily, mm -hmm. there's no way for him to identify it. It's like loose bills, you know. There's, you're not getting it back. Nobody's nobody has to give it back to you because there's no way to know that you're actually the real loser. Maybe you're making up a story. Unless there's an identifying feature. So according to Abaya, if you don't know if it means if you pick up an item before the owner knows that it was lost, the type of item that has no simon, then it is not you it is you didn't you do not give up on it because yish lemidas lo have yish. And according to Rava, you, you it's a theoretical yish. Toshma, Hamaitzi Moes Abatik Nasiyas Abatim Adrashas. The guy finds money in a in a shul or in a synagogue or in a study hall. We will call Malkam Sharab Mitzim Sham. Any place where the public frequents, Harelo Shalai, you can keep it. If Nishabala Masiyas Shemihem, because people give up. Simar says Valiyad did not find Maybe the owners don't realize that he that the owner doesn't realize that he lost it, so he never really gave up. Abaya says, remember, you have to actually give up on it, not a theoretical giving up. Mm -hmm. says, says, a person touches his wallet constantly. So if you find money, you can presume the loser is a weir and has already abandoned it. Toshma. When it, okay, so we're familiar with leket, shikha, and peah. These are the gifts that are given to the poor. Leket are the small, the small stalks that were cut and, and they, they didn't make it into the bundle. You have to leave it. You can't pick it up. Mm -hmm. Up to two stalks. The poor walk through the field. At some point, we say, okay, all the poor are already done. Anybody's allowed to take it. So what's that point? From when the Nemushas go through. What are Nemushas? You want to know? What are the Nemushas? These are the elders that walk with their canes. So they're, they're obviously, as you can imagine, they're not the pushers, right? The pushers, those are the guys that are going first. These are the people that are pushing their way through. And the people that leave at the end, the people walking through the end, these are the, the older folks that are more meticulous and they're slower. Once they go through the fields, anyone is allowed to pick up Leket. Why? It's when the second and third group of people that are going to look for the stuff, as soon as they walk through the field, anything they leave behind is ownerless. Why is it ownerless? Because of Yush. The poor have abandoned it. Sigmar says, what do you mean? Even though the local Aniyam have given up, there might be other Aniyam that don't even know the field exists. Other poor poor people that don't even know the field exists. How can you say they've given up on it and abandoned it if they don't even know the field exists? Sigmar says, Very simple. In other words, the sort of idea here is, is that the poor... They, they they presume they'll be able to get the le the leket as long as the elderly folks haven't w w haven't walked through the field yet. Once the elders have walked through the field, then everybody gives up on it. It's sort of like an automatic giving up. And the the, the people that aren't locals, they've already given up even before the field before they've come to the field because they figure the locals are going to take it first. They're not going to have a chance to collect it. So therefore, this is not yish shalai midas, it's yish midas. Everybody effectively has given up on it. No, knowingly. Everyone's abandoned it knowingly. Toshma. Kitsiyas bederach. A guy finds uh, kitsiyas. These are um, uh, cut, cut, cut pieces of material. I'm sorry. Kitsiyas, I'm sorry. Kitsiyas is, is um, figs that are going to be dried. Figs that are on their way to be dried. So these figs are cut with a certain type of uh, metal cutter that causes them to be able to be sun-dried. They're very amenable to sun drying. So you find Ksias Bederach on the roads. You find these sun these sun dried these figs that are drying in the sun. Even if it's next to a field, even next to a field that was used, that was harvested to dry the figs. So it was high, it was harvested with the express purpose of drying the figs. Or a regular fig tree that's hanging over the over the road. You find figs underneath it. You're allowed to eat them, and you're exempt from Iser. They're ownerless, effectively. But if they were olives or carob, tree, carob trees, also, they're prohibited. Okay, so let's look at two, two aspects here. The first aspect, of the, the, first, the first component is the figs that fell off the tree. So it's a question of Abaya. Racial Abaya like Asha. In other words, maybe the owner doesn't know they fell yet. As long as they're on the tree, you're not allowed to take them. You're, allowed, you're only allowed to take them when, when, once they foot fell.
Okay, Rachel Abaya Lakasha. So the, the first part of the things that fell down, it's not difficult to abaya them because I had the Kashivi Mimash The Katsiyas, these um the dried figs are valuable. So he's aware of what's close to the what's close to the road, and it, and that's effectively knowingly abandoned. To Ainim Nami made the idea the Nasra. He knows that the figs are going to fall off, fall off, so he understands and makes it ownerless. El Safel and Ravakasha. However, the end of the, the, the Bryce is difficult according to Robert's opinion. Why? Because the olives fall onto the road, right? Which is not a, not apparently as common as the figs falling down, falling off the tree. And the, the, the Bryce says they do not become ownerless. Presumably that's because of Abaya, because he doesn't know that they fell. That fits very well with Abaya. It doesn't fit well with Rava, because according to Rava, why isn't there a theoretical Yush giving up on it? Theoretically, had he known that the stuff would have would have fell down, he would have given up. So therefore, we should consider it as if he already given, gave up on it. it Make sense? Yeah. Sigmar so, yeah. so, says, Amar Bavu, shiny Zayas, Hav, Chazusa, Mechia, Chalaf. Avgav, the Nasun, Zaysi, made the idea, Dukta, the Inish, Inishum. Okay. So interestingly, apparently the shade of the olive can tell you which olive tree it fell from. So the owner thinks that the people on the road will return him the olives that fell from his tree. Because they can look at the color of it, he can see the color of the olives on the tree, and they can figure out if it belongs to him. Yeah. So there's some expectation there that he'll get it back, and therefore there's no yish whatsoever. Yeah. So Gemara says, well, why don't you apply that logic to the fig tree as well? And say that the fig tree, you know, I feel a then why, does he, why is he abandoning the, the figs that fell down? Why doesn't he think that people will return them to him? This is sort of intuitive. Uh, once a fig falls down, it becomes mius. It becomes, you know, unsellable. It, it's not edible anymore. It sort of gets ruined. So therefore, he, therefore, on, on the figs, he gives up. On the olives, however, which are going to be pressed for olive oil, he doesn't really care that much. And, and it, it doesn't become as mius. It doesn't get as, as ruined from falling down. Okay. Toshma. Let's do one more. You have a robber. He took from one person, gave it to another person. Same thing is true of a goslin. A go Remember, a ganev is a nighttime thief. A goslin is a daytime thief. Similarly, the chen yarden. Yarden here refers to the Jordan River, but it referred to any river. What happened was the river changed course. And what it did was it took somebody else's property and connected it to another, the other person's property. It, it, it flooded somebody at one person and it, it moved away from the other person's property. The, 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 the law is that if the person gets, he, he, he loses what he lost and he gets what he got. Submission says, A river or a, or a daytime thief, he sort of gives up hope of getting back his lost item. Because the guy's a daytime thief, he's, he has a tremendous amount of, he was mugged basically. The guy doesn't anticipate getting back the items that he lost when he got mugged. Eleganev, but if it was a nighttime thief, he doesn't see the stuff that was taken from him that he can be that he has the ability to give up on it. He doesn't know what was taken from him. So how could he give up? According to Rava, he can give he can theoretically give up. Had he known he would have given up, that constitutes Yush. That makes sense according to Rava. But according to Bai, you actually have to give up. You have to know that it was lost. Well, in the middle of the night, he doesn't know it was lost. But he doesn't know it was taken by a nighttime thief. So the Gemara says, Tergamar Papa, what type of nighttime thief are we referring to? We're referring to list of Mizuyan armed robbers. Armed robbers, people that they come either by night or by day, they have a status of nighttime thieves because they're clear, they're afraid of people. But you actually know that they're there, that's where they're coming with arms. And that's the same as a daytime thief. So the Gemara says, Trey Gavni Gazans, two different types of daytime thieves. A night, uh, an armed robber, obviously, you know about also, but he's not exactly like a daytime thief, like a, like a you know, a mugger. Okay. Uh, let's stop here. Okay. Great day. Meaningful tightness.